Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 5 talking about managing the test activities and uh, moving on to the next segment which is 5.3 Test Monitoring, Test Control and Test Completion. In this particular tutorial we'll be talking about the monitoring and control along with matrices. As a part of chapter one, however, we have given you a very high level understanding on what exactly monitoring, control and matrices are. In simple word, monitoring is all about keeping a consistent progress measurement on the ongoing progress of the project. Of course, a plan is created, but until and unless you keep an eye on how exactly the plan is being progressed, as we have multiple factors to take care of, like the cost, the time, the effort, etc. Thus, it becomes very important that how exactly the things are being done. If in case we find a deviation as an output of the monitoring, we look forward to take an appropriate control action. And that control action is what we refer to as test control. However, a test control activity is defined as a corrective or guiding action which is taken as a result of deviation observed from the monitoring activity. Now, control actions can be very, very appropriate to that of the deviation observed. Thus, it may not be, certainly can be standardized. So, but uh, there could be some of the common activities which we quite often observe in our projects. We may predefine them as well as a part of the planning itself. But certainly most of the things are very undeterministic, which you may not have planned. So you may have to take as a test manager, a very, very appropriate control action. And that's where this becomes the major responsibilities of the test manager, not a test engineer. And when it comes to the test matrices, these are those weapons what we can use to consistently monitor the ongoing progress. So matrices are generally some sort of calculations and formulae which helps you measure an entity within the life cycle of testing. So let's quickly have a look on what exactly the syllabus is trying to say and deep dive into the same definitions what we just discussed. So as we talk about the syllabus, the test monitoring is concerned with gathering information about testing. This information is used to assess test progress and to measure whether the test exit criteria or the test task associated with the exit criteria are satisfied, such as meeting the target for the coverage of the product risk, requirements, or acceptance criteria. In simple words, anything what you do can be very well measured and must be monitored for their ongoing progress. If in case we observe a deviation, we have to take appropriate control action. At the same time, if I'm talking about the test control, uh, test control uses the information from the test monitoring to provide in a form of the control directives, guidance, and the necessary corrective actions to achieve the most effective and efficient testing. Examples of control directive include reprioritizing test when an identified risk occurs, re-evaluating whether a test item meets entry or exit criteria due to rework, and adjusting the test schedule to address a delay in delivery of the test environment or even adding new resources when there is a need for it. So in simple words, they have just given you some sample examples from different point of view. But however, those things, what happens in reality would be very, very particular, very, very specific in terms of controlling the deviations observed. So that's how we talk about the control. However, in the introduction, we are also talking about what is test completion. So test completion certainly collects data from the completed test activities to consolidate the experience, testware, and any other relevant information. The test completion activities occur at a project milestone, such as when a test level is completed, an agile iteration is finished, which is a sprint, a test project is completed, or sometime even cancelled or suspended, a software system is released or a maintenance release is completed. That means completion is one of the major activity of the test process. If you remember from the chapter one, completion phase basically gathers everything together. But however, we do have two types of report that is test progress report and test completion report. But just hold on. We'll be talking about this in our next segment of the same tutorial. There we will cover in deep dive that what is test completion report and how does it vary from the test progress support? In this tutorial, we're just targeting the monitoring and control, which are limited to the definition. Now let's quickly look at what are the test matrices and get some good examples of it. Well, 
Here in this particular part, we will be talking about the test matrices. Test matrices are, as I told you, some formulae and calculations which measures any kind of activity, any kind of task which you perform in testing. In simple words, or a very high level, uh, we can monitor anything what happens in testing, including test, defect, risk, coverage, confidence, and these five parameters covers everything what you do in testing. So. All those matrices are not getting discussed in the foundation level. However, if you are interested, you can always go and download the test manager syllabus to get more details about these matrices. We have 100 plus matrices available to measure or monitor anything in entire testing lifecycle. But right here, we're just giving you a very high level introduction because test managers are the one who are responsible to select the matrices and measure them from time to time. Okay, so when it comes to test matrices, they, these are gathered to show progress against the planned schedule and budget, the current quality of test object, and the effectiveness of test activities with respect to the objectives or an iteration goal. That means the overall objective of the testing could be very easily measured with help of these matrices. In fact, in very simple example, if I have to travel from point A to point B, and then I certainly take help of Google Maps or Waze, or other kind of options what you have on your cell phone. And the Google Maps say, for example, gives you three different routes to reach the destination B, but you chose one of them being shortest and taking less time. However, when you are traveling from point A to point B, the plan, when you search on the maps, it said that it will take you one hour of time to get there, but it does not mean it would be exactly the same when you start traveling. Right. So when you start traveling, you consistently keep an eye on the Google Maps. As the lady says, take left in 100 meter, continue straight for one kilometer, or she says, take second exit from the roundabout, etc. And that's what is called as monitoring. You're consistently listening to that lady, consistently following the directions and listening to that person and following it. Right. But as soon as you take a wrong turn, probably you continue straight and you were supposed to take left. The maps reroutes you stating that hey if possible make a u-turn right and that's test control that's a control activity and in this entire discussion the google maps was playing the role of matrix okay so let's quickly see some good examples of the matrices from different perspective however we will not be very detailed here so some high level examples are right here the examples of matrices include Project progress matrix, which includes things like test completion, resource utilization, or test effort applied so far. Second, test progress matrix. These are all related to progress of testing, like test case implementation progress, test environment preparation progress, number of test case run, not run, pass or fail, overall test execution time. Also talk about product quality matrices, availability, response time, mean time to failure, Defect matrices like number and priorities of defect found or fixed, defect density, defect detection percentage. Risk matrices, which includes at any point of time the number of risks remaining to be resolved or mitigated. Coverage matrices, requirement coverage, code coverage, statement coverage, decision coverage, path coverage, whatnot. There are so many coverage options available. And also to talk about the cost matrix, which are more from the project perspective. So cost of testing, organizational cost of quality. So if you look at these matrices, uh, kind of like once again, you would understand that, hey, we just discussed almost everything what happens in testing, right from the test, defect, risk, coverage, and people confidence. And at the same time, not only these things, but we also talked about the project matrices, the product matrices, the process matrices, and the people matrices, like resource utilization. If you think that you need one more extra resource to do automation, then you have already exhausted all your resources for other activities. And that's where you need one more person to be hired. So we do have many things to talk about, right? All the parameters, all the different matrices, thus it becomes a very huge thing for a test manager to take a call about. But for now, all you need to understand is there are something called as matrices and each one of them, whatever we discussed right now, has a formula behind the screen. Okay, But at this point of time, you need not worry that how exactly it's being calculated. At this point, you just need to know that what is a matrix and what are the different examples of it. Right. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.